Okay, great. All right, so I am now recording after getting your permission. This is our sixth session together, I think, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I have been so busy, <laughs> I have to tell you. Oh my gosh, between, between Harvard and Wharton, um, and then now Wharton and Harvard, and then now they don't tell you the modules, um, uh, Diane. And um, and um, by the way, your your name tag says Emma Mitrovic. Oh, does it? Yeah, you may oh. want to change it, okay. but that's all right. I don't mind. I mean, everyone knows you're Diane anyway. So okay. um, you know, but the um, your you when you log in and sign in, it has just to let you know. Okay. Yeah, I I um, I subbed for somebody yesterday. Ah, so ah I see. Here. Okay, well, the, um, you go there um, and, uh, and they, they brought a guy, his name is Rodrigo Jordan, who climbed to Mount Everest three different times from three different sides. And he's one of three survivors in the world. And he, and he was sharing with us the problems of communication. Um, you need 6,000 calories a day just to survive. And... Um, and he was saying, um, now he produces movies on, on climbing Mount Everest, by the way. So, um, but he, he said, you know, you need 6,000 calories and you need to be able to convince the person next to you to be friends because otherwise um, you're both going to die. <laughs> or, or if you climb up to the top and you stay there too long, you'll die too. And oftentimes you die coming down because, you know, you had the motivation and goal climbing to the top of the world and yet coming down there's no motivation now no driving force right and so that's a lot of times and then you also realize that sometimes your body isn't fit for going up so when you get up to you know a certain height you could some people may have um, a cerebral infarct you know so um bursting of the vessel inside the brain and so that's the that was really moving um, I took a picture with him and then, I, and then my Harvard buddies told me that, you know, that guy is like really famous, but you know, we were all sitting there in the audience. There's 50 of us. We all paid uh, Wharton 70,000 um, roughly, including all the extras, you know, but, um, but the, um, so I'm, I'm rounding 65,000 for tuition officially, and then 5,000 extra okay. for um, some people paid it for five weeks. Um, my version is, um, five months, but still it's very expensive. Very. Um, but if I told you after going through the first week of my five month experience that I would pay half a million for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope they never hear that, oh, <laughs> you know, but you know, telling. right. That's but telling. it tells you, right. Yes. The things they showed us. Right. Mm -hmm. So at Harvard, we had to do the Southwest airlines case study. And most people understand Southwest airlines. Um, because they're, they're, they're point to point, they're on time, they're known for being on time. There's no, there's no peanuts or anything they give you. Um, there's no first class. There's only one class, right? So you go there and, um, and, uh, and they're very profitable airline compared to many of the airlines with hubs. And so many airlines tried to copy them, but Harvard has us do the case and study the numbers. And so we know for facts using artificial intelligence, why Southwest is the leader. And it's a two hour experience. And Harvard's, Harvard's program is actually uh, nine months for the short, to, you know, there's the shortest version and then it, or 18 months, I chose the 18 month one. So what happens is they're colliding with each other. Um, in fact, next week when I go up to Boston, it collides at the same time on one of the days. So I will be missing my Saturday, I can only choose one, but my Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, It'll be Wharton in the morning and driving to Boston at night, but I will be driving afterwards in a, uh, and then staying in the campground mm -hmm. and then having that contrast of the campground with the nice hotel at Harvard. So, so with my family. So what will happen is um, it's contrast. Now, how do I know about the contrast? I have coaches from each institution, but also um, kids that I work with who show me the contrast is really, really important. And so here's one of the contrast about doing the calculations at Harvard, but then at Wharton, they made us role play. Same case. Now pretend you're the CEO of Southwest. And in that same hour, pretend 
you are the CEO of United. And you know, United came up with a version to copy Southwest. And so they copied it and they called that brand without the UNI and it was just TED and that's how TED was formed. So yeah, so a lot of these things, you know, you pay for it and then you learn, right? You know, they learn. And, and you know, you find out that, wow, how could something that's a great business model when copied lose you so much money? And the CEOs at United got fired for this. And because, because what happens is your customers now don't understand that I have all these points at United. And then when I fly TED, you don't have that. I don't get it. I'm confused, right? Even though they get it at Southwest, they don't get it when United does it, right? They don't get it. And then what happens is they leave your airline completely. I'm just going to go take Northwest or something. I'm never going to take United again. Well, that, that'll be a problem, right? And so if you didn't role play, you wouldn't know how the other side felt right. or why it didn't work. Why is it that when we sing Elvis and we sound exactly like Elvis, it's no longer unique? Well, you just copied him. Right. You weren't authentic. So it's the same thing of authenticity, but told in a different story. Now I'm going to use Trader Joe's. You know, you, you live by Trader Joe's. We know what Trader Joe's is like. Now, the, those wasabi popcorn, right, that are $5 a bag, let's say. I'm just making this up, right? But whatever it is, yeah. you can never find wasabi popcorn at ShopRite, at, um, at Wegmans and other places because only Trader Joe's does stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Or the Sriracha, whatever, you know, they've got something like that. And then, and then just when you want another bag, it's gone. They either moved it or they don't have it anymore. And by doing that, as a grocer, you're all selling the same items, right? ShopRite is selling the same things as Kings. Well, Kings is a little bit more upscale, right? But they're selling generally the same thing. Like you can find Heinz ketchup there, Mm -hmm. but you'd be hard pressed to find Heinz ketchup at Trader Joe's. And so Trader Joe's is a very profitable, one of the most profitable models to do, and yet really hard to copy. And if you copy them, it might give you a brand identity issue at those things. So my point is about all this is going to Wharton helped me with singing some of these lyrics. Oh, wow. I had, and I also sang in the, in the, uh, in the Wharton class, because at the very end of that week, I sang um, the Willie, Willie Nelson, Willie Nelson song. Right. So um you know, that, that one, right. Always on my mind. I, I had sang that with, with the class because I was asked, you know, how do you feel about Wharton after a week? And I said, you know, how I feel is maybe I didn't love you quite as often as I could have. Right. My classmates. Right. And maybe I didn't treat you quite as often as I should have. If I made you feel second best, classmates, AMP 81, I'm sorry I was blind. You were always on my mind. You were always on my mind. So I want to improve my peer-to-peer relationship by doing that. And, And the professor, Jeff Klein, Professor Klein said it really struck a chord in his heart when I did that. I love it. it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, yeah. I love you for that. That was so beautiful. Yeah. That you I, it, just it, like, that. it like got upgraded from the guided imagery that was forcefully doing to where, see, we lived together. We ate together. We woke up together for a whole week. You know what that does? You know, we had oh, to, yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't take a lot. There's people we live with every day when we take it for granted. Mm-hmm. Right. Having something like that. Now, I was with the vice president of Clorox. And, uh, and uh, so, I mean, you, you know, these leaders. Right. And we all live in these nice towns. Right. And we live in these nice towns. And what happens is we think that we really bond. But all we're doing is we're paying for the rights, the membership to be. And those are the taxes to be in that town. But we really don't bond. And then when we do undergrad, like most kids, they want, like when I tutor them, coach them, their dream is to get to these top places. And then, and then inside, because you're working so hard to be number one, you don't bond again. 
now it took us, you know, at this level where it's no longer to show anybody and then you pay again. And that, that's why, so it took it takes $70,000 to reteach us all about bonding. There was a top guy at the FBI that was there. Um, there's all different individuals that are very special. The guy who invented Bing search was there, you know? Um, and so we all bonded, but no one sang. All right. But singing that's moved. Awesome. What well, was like really Everyone moving, sang. right? Amazing. Yeah, I yeah. So I have to thank you. Brought that to the table. Yeah, bringing that to the table changed the entire conversation, right? Yeah. It changed it. And that's the power of music. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just irrefutable data and evidence. Harvard's very big on data is that if you look up um, ABBA, right? The four, ABBA, you look up for net worth 300 million and you ask why what did they do they came up with some tunes right you could say that right they came up with some jingles and some lyrics but it it hit a chord and we are you know and you can also say the same thing about money is that it's a, it's a fabricated storage of value that we created right and when you when you look at it when you life like that and you start to aim for and I just came out of another talk, by the way, in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And they said that if you're an expert and you speak a lot, that it shows that you might not be as professional, right? Mm -hmm. And my, it, which is in some respects, you know, uh, true, but too generalized in the sense that it depends on what you're talking about. See, you, you, you go to your doctor, you wish they spoke with you more. You know, you wait for such a long time. <laughs> They're never on time, right? You know, not always. I mean, most of the time, not on time. The nurse comes and sees you, and you have those couple minutes with the doctor. And you wish they would say more. And the other thing you wish would happen is well, after they're done talking with you, they wouldn't make you feel so bad, right? Or so scared, right? Usually those are the cases, right? When you go see a doctor. And I, I can I can say that because, and they're they're not paid the same amount as ABBA with the 300 million, right? Yeah. Right. Or Bruno Mars, right. You know, with what he did. Right. And so I have found that when I sent you that I wanted to do just the way you are, this came from a high school kid. Um, this is a hard song, Diane, I need your help yeah. because, because, because it's just like the way they do it now, right. It's not the way that it was done in the seventies or sixties. And that didn't mean that I would survive was easy, right? That was art, right? right yeah. Um, but you got to, it's so true that you have to get into the song. Mm -hmm. So there are certain parts that I'm okay with um, that, um, that, I, that I'm okay with, but, um, but many parts where it, 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 it's hard. So I'm going to pull up his lyrics um, here. <laughs> And um, and then I'm going to share my screen so that we can we can see the lyrics. Everyone can see the lyrics together. And here we are. So it starts with, oh, her eyes, her eyes makes the stars look like they're not shining. Her hair, her hair falls perfectly without her trying. She's so beautiful, and I tell her every day. Um, so I don't know if, um, if that's the way to do it, right? But I'll leave it like that for now. And I'm going to skip down to this phrase here. When I see your face, there's not a thing that I would change. Because you're amazing, just the way you are. And when you smile, the whole world stops and stares for a while. Cause girl, you're amazing. Just the way you are. This, I was able to do a little bit better mm -hmm. because I kind of figured it out a bit. Um, and then if I jump down to, um, let's see, where is it? Um, there's the there's a phrase where it, she he says um, uh, um, now I can't find it. Um, her lips, her lips. 
no um oh right here this part right here oh you know you know you know i never ask you to change if perfect what you're searching for then just stay the same that i'm okay with right yeah, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. but the beginning part right this mm -hmm. how do you can you do it for me so that i can kind of like i i you know it's all it's talk singing That's yeah why it it's is. hard uh -huh. her, her eyes her eyes make the stars look like they're not shining her hair her hair falls perfectly without your trying she's so beautiful and i tell her every day um okay. my voice is a little off because i had i was sick last week but um uh -huh. that's but you see what it is her yeah. eyes her eyes make the stars look like they're not shining her hair her hair it's it's very rhythmical oh Oh, so her eyes, her eyes make the stars look like they're not shining. Her hair, her hair falls perfectly without her trying. Yeah, there you go. That felt much better, didn't it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, much better. I didn't yeah. know how to like, how do you say her eyes? So her eyes, her eyes. I mean, the her ah, the her eyes, the ah on the eyes is a glot. Her eyes, her eyes, her eyes. Her eyes, her there eyes. Is. Uh, okay. Is a little, is it called a glot? Her glot? Eyes. Like G L O T? Yeah, T T. Oh, G L O T T. What what does glot mean? It's like, ah, 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 It's when the two oh. chords, it's when your chords are together hmm. and you keep them together as puffs of air go through. Oh. It's, very, it's a very pop singing technique. Oh, oh okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So the, this one became technique loaded. It's like uh, some of these <laughs> modern songs are like technique loaded. So I don't like, what do you do? Or, so I see. So now I'm learning uh, something about technique. So her eyes, her eyes make the stars look like they're not shining. Her hair, her hair falls perfectly without her trying. She's yes. so beautiful. And I tell her every day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when you, um, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I know. When I, what is that? Is that how it goes? Uh, yeah. Down here, uh, you know, you know, oh, you know, you know, you know, I never ask you to change. If perfect, what you're searching for, then just stay the same. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you've, you've got that beautifully done. Yeah, so it's like I had to like chop this thing up and I, I said, this is terrible. I'm chopping them. So I said, all right, because I'm so busy with all that stuff, um, you got and then they load you up with more it's like fire hose of personality thing but it helps me to think oh wow you know what if i applied the wharton stuff into trying to like say this right it's really very humbling to say this to a girl right mm -hmm. your eyes your eyes make the stars look like they're not shining i mean that's beautiful mm -hmm. such poetry oh, right it's gorgeous that it's so <laughs> right it's so no wonder they gave him all that money right so oh all right but what did he do, right? He he took words that they already exist. Like we know the word make and stars and look, and, but the way it's put together, it's it's powerful. And then how do you unleash, how do you spell cast? And I call this singing stuff spell casting, right? In the sense that if I don't spell cast correctly, I read the words of the spell, but then the other person on the other side, um, nothing happens, right? You know, you know, it's like then the, the, if I was the fairy godfather or godmother, and then I ha took my wand and hit Cinderella's dress with it, and nothing happens, right? Well, that that's not going to make Cinderella very happy, right? So, so you are like the connector of this. So her eyes, her eyes make the stars look like they're not shining. Then you can start once you unleash that. I can, I can, I can figure it out a bit more. Right. Well, once uh, yeah. you start getting that, it, yeah. it, it's the rhythm too. Mm. Yeah, the rhythm. The God, rhythm combined God. with the block. Yeah. Exactly. Make the stars yeah. look like they are not shining, and you can say you can make the. You, you don't have to do the exact rhythm of him, but you have to feel the rhythm so it feels rhythmical. Hmm. I mean, you can be off a little bit of his. Right. I mean, her hair, her hair, most perfectly without her trying. She's so beautiful. And you tell her every day. Yeah, I know, I know. When I compliment her, she won't believe me. And it's so, it's so. You see, I'm I'm yeah. changing a little bit of his rhythm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. still working. Yes, it's still working, yeah. 
It's so, it's so sad to think that she don't see what I see. But every time she asks me, do I look okay? I say. Yeah, you're sounding really good, Dr. Chu. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> that was great. <laughs> well, this whole personality thing. I mean, jumping within the same hour as the U United CEO, um, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that was just, yeah, right? Intense, yeah. right? Yeah, and then I, I try to say like, be really be authentic right when i see your face there's not a thing that i would change because you're amazing just the way you are and when you smile the whole world stops and stares for a while because girl you're amazing just the way you are and then we get down to here, back to the same thing. Her lips, her lips, I could kiss them all day if she'd let me. Her laugh, her laugh, she hates, but I think it's so sexy. She's so beautiful, and I tell her every day. Oh, you know, you know, I never, oh, you know, you know, you know, I never ask you to change. If perfect's what you're searching for, then just stay the same. And then, well, then what do you do with here? Like, so don't even bother asking. So don't even bother asking if you look okay. You know, I'll say, is it Perfect, like that? Just like you did. Okay. It's still, it goes into a little bit of a talk sing. Okay. So don't right. even bother asking if you look okay. You know, I'll say, when I see your face, there's not a thing I, I would change because you're amazing just the way you are and when you smile the whole world stops and stares for a while because girl you're amazing just the way you are yeah i guess i could just play around with it and it works yes it yeah. does it does yeah. the transition between singing you know singing more on the vowel like you were mm. doing with mm. the chorus Mm. going into the verse which is more a little bit of talk singing with a lot of rhythm mm. you know you just got to make that transition and what's a classic song that that i could practice that would do this a classic song yeah uh, something more like you know more more of um like i a hit from the 80s or uh, or or um uh you know 70s you know something that that is um not as modern as this. Did they do that then, back then? I think they were in the, the 80s. They were kind of more big singing. There was a lot yeah, of right. singing. Belting and stuff like that. So they weren't, and, yeah. they weren't doing this, right? This no, is like, they weren't. And in yeah. the 40s and 50s, they were kind of crooning. It's right. just interesting how the singing nowadays is very glot oriented. And it's G-L-O-T, not T, no T-T's. Oh, oh, okay, G-L-O-T. It's, it's G-L-O-T-T-I-S. Hmm. Um, so it can be spelt, I guess, with two T's or one T, but I... G O T T I S G L O G L O T T I S G L O T T I. Oh, the epiglottis. Yes. Glottis. Exactly. Oh, okay. Glottis. So that's where the glot comes. Oh, that's where the, yeah, that's where the medical side, like exactly. epiglottis, the flap. Okay. I uh, see. Uh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's like the latter part of the, the nineties, uh, you know, hmm. uh, Oops, I did it again. You know, with Britney Spears. She yeah. Kind of, kind of, uh, 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 <laughs> so Britney that? Spears would help me. <laughs> and then Kim Kardashian. Yeah. Hey, that's a vocal fry. The way she talks like right. that. She kind of hangs out on her, on her chords with very little air going through, but she doesn't open her chords, you know, like it's, it, she kind of holds them as the air is going through. Gives her that, hey, how are I, how are Now, I? Billie Holiday did some frying, quite a bit of it. Yeah, she was, I think she was just so unique. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, her her voice is very, very unique. Um, mm. Mm. She's a great phraser. And mm. and the, the thing about her is that her pain just came, she sang through her pain. Right, it's again, the authenticity, yeah. right? You know, so, yeah. so for example, Ed Sheeran's song that we once did, um, Perfect, does that have a lot of, does that have any glot in there? Um, it goes, I found a love for me 
darling, just dive right in and follow my lead. Yeah, I don't think he's, is, no. is, you know, no, he sort no. of sings on top of that a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. So mm-hmm. though it's modern, yes, it he doesn't is modern. do, he doesn't do what Bruno Mars was doing. Right. Mm-hmm. No, no. Isn't it, yeah. isn't it fascinating how every singer has their own authenticity, their own. Very, way. very much so. That, um. I mean, Ed Sheeran's an amazing singer. He's an amazing songwriter. Hmm. He's, um, you know, his his the way he sings with the way his rhythmical sense and his phrasing. It's, it's just- challenging. This song it was challenging. Like, because we were just kids when we fell in love, not knowing what it was. I will not give you up this time. It's like, unless... Like practicing once with you always like sets the stage. Like uh, over time, it just like if I if I if I sing it again and I use it in different contexts, it helps me get deeper. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted yeah. to see whether or not you felt that way. Like when I just get more familiarize it with it, right? Then then it's almost like muscle memory in some way. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. What what you just sang with that song was beautiful. Yeah. It was Thank really you. really nice. Um, yeah. You know, I always say that, um, w- you know, when you find a new song, you kind of uh, have to find your approach Yeah. and understand the song, what the song needs. I have to deserve the song. It's like, I'm not deserving of a song. <laughs> yet, right? And then I, I look at it and say, yeah, if I could like, you know, because when, when he had like the phrase, baby, I'm dancing in the dark, I had, I had struggled with that. But now it's like right here, I could say, Oh, baby, I'm dancing in the dark with you between my arms, barefoot on the grass, listening to our favorite song. When I saw you in that dress, looking so beautiful, I don't deserve this, darling. You look perfect tonight. Right? I, I, can, I can play around with it because I now am into it as opposed to before I wasn't, I, I, I was, I, I, there, the guy, the song and me were, there was a, there was a chasm between us. Mm-hmm. And now as I close that gap, um, you, for example, uh, when you work with me, I'm building this bridge and I so much want to um, deserve the song that eventually the, 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 the notes just fall in place. Like the sounds fall in place, right? The, so deserving, I, I, I treat it as deserving of the song because it's like, I don't want to conquer the song. I want to, I want to be worthy of it, mm-hmm. you know? And then, and then getting closer to that. And so that's why I, I, I brought this, the Bruno Mars song. It's like, um, you would, it's almost like if I talk to an engineer to build something, they would know something, but someone who's a carpenter would know it really differently because they live it every day. They put every piece of wood there and they smell the wood as opposed to seeing it in a document, right? Or something like that. And so, so when you share your experience with me on your interpretation of how to do her eyes, her eyes, it's like, yeah, her eyes, her eyes, make the stars look like they're not shining, right? So, so it's like, it, it makes it, I, I now feel it more, a mm-hmm. bit closer. So what do you do with the O? Oh, her eyes, I mean, if you feel it, I always no. think, you know, if you don't feel it, don't sing it. Mm. Mm. If you don't feel the rhythm and they have like these, ooh, hey, whatever they are, whatever yeah. singers are, and they have those, their, their little, um, you know the little parts of ooing and eyeing. Hmm. If you don't really feel it, I wouldn't sing it because you could just go, her eyes, her eyes. You could just go into her right. eyes instead of oh, unless right. you feel it. Right. Um, okay. That okay. that is pretty much my my thought. Unless uh, and and then and if you can't feel it and you want to work on feeling it, then work on feeling it. And yeah. But if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it. You know, that is a ex- great example of imagine when we did um, John Lennon, right? Mm-hmm. That was initially hard. And then again, the muscle memory and building that bridge. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. 
no hell below us, above us only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. You imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard to do. Now, the, the Ukraine war helps, right? It helps and that nothing to kill or die for and no religion to the shooting helped. Right. Um, yeah. All these current events that help. Yeah. Imagine all our people living life in peace. You, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you will join us and the world will be as one. So that that is like, I wasn't doing, like if we go back and we recorded these, I, I couldn't do it the way I do it now. Do you, do you think so? Is it oh, different? Oh, no, you do. You're, you're right, on the, right, right in the pocket there. I really like you. That's a little, little doodad. You did it. You felt it. Yeah, it's a doodad, right, the doodad. And then this is my, this is, this is what 70,000 gets you. Right? So uh, this is my Hogan uh, report, okay? Yeah. Um, and in the Hogan report, it tells you your score on various things, right? The there's a yellow, there's a red. The, uh -huh. the red is like your hot buttons, and then blue, blue is where you want to go, um, and then and then and then yellow is what you are. And um, and there's categories like adjustment, ambition, sociability, interpersonal sensitivity, prudence, inquisitive, and learning approach. Right. And they, they, they score you uh, and it's called Hogan, Hogan, H-O-G-A-N. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, and they, their host, Hogan personality survey, I get 100 percent on interpersonal sensitivity. Wow. Well, I could leverage that, you know, now I wouldn't be very good if I was dealing with someone asking me questions on a public forum. And then I probably need someone with an interpersonal sensitivity of very low. So that I'm not spending all my time answering everyone's questions and I'm not doing anything else, right? So there's, when you build teams, you want to have people who can um, be uh, complementary to you and you form a system, but you have to know who you are. And so having a high level of sensitivity, if you leverage it towards the singing or understanding the lyrics, I spend a lot of time trying to understand the lyrics. Mm. And I'll do, I'll do this. Um, we once did, I will survive. Mm -hmm. Right. So at first I was afraid I was petrified, kept thinking I could never live without you by my side. But then I spent so many nights thinking how you did me wrong and I grew strong and I learned how to get along. And so you're back from outer space. I just walked in to find you here with that sad look upon your face. I should have changed my stupid lock. I should have made you leave your key. If I had known for just one second, you'd be back to bother me. Go on now, go walk out the door. Just turn around now, cause you're not welcome anymore. Weren't you the one who tried to hurt me with goodbye? Did you think I'd crumble? Did you think I'd lay down and die? Oh, not now I, I will survive. Oh, as long as I know how to love, I know I will survive. I've got all my life to live. I've got all my love to give and I will survive. I will survive. Hey, hey. Right. So I can get into it. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's better than when I started because somehow the muscle memory, somehow the other trainings and because I already know, knew the song and going in there, um, it just changed. Mm -hmm kind of without me having to like, I wasn't like constantly practicing this either, which is something I wanted to share with you, the, the, the magic mysteries. By the way, this is the reunion. The look at how many people are gonna be at the Harvard reunion. And wow. then um, we've got like, we've got, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, uh, let me just go through something where they, we, we have the shirts, we have a whole gala at night um, we got all these sponsorships. And so, so yeah, this is, um, and that's, what's pinging me over here, but I, um, it's like when you can get into the mode and when I came out of Wharton, we got a Wharton shirt and Harvard, same thing. And I, and I put on the shirt by the way, and then I look around and I said, 
no adults on my street are wearing their college shirt. <laughs> right, right. But you remember when we were in college, right? We yeah. would we would all wear the shirt and then it would come and go, right? Yeah. And then and then some of these very big hit songs, they're like always being played. They're so powerful yeah. that yeah. you still you still select them at, at mm -hmm. the karaoke. And in fact, one of the things because I brought up singing, we're gonna have a karaoke in Wharton. Oh, yeah, get yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, really? yeah, 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 yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that is like really fun in the sense that because it brings closer bonding, right? Again, the whole thing about getting closer to each other is, you know, just experiencing each other's um, company and voice, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then somehow they also believe that in corporate training, this might be good for people and companies. Right. Oh, right isn't that isn't that wild right it's just it so is, wild right just from you singing that yeah just from that you singing that. yeah one that's little right. oh my that's God. right that one little thing right because wow. i guess the places the places that you go and the things that you do right so um uh i mean you sit there and you think this i yeah. i sit there whenever i teach i always think okay i want to make a difference in the student's right. life I, yeah. you know i i just whatever it is i can do to make it make it better for them or to whatever well, look what you did. What a difference you made. That's huge, Dr. Chu. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It, it is, um, I mean, if you I'm want. So, I'm so, um, oh, my God, that's just, it just makes me feel so good. Like, that is. Right. It made you, like you say, you can, you can, now, I mean, it's all true. So, you know, diversity, e equity, equality, inclusion. How do you do that without singing? Right. You do that oh, with singing, right? Yeah. It, it, it's, right. well, you know, singing is joyful. Yeah. And I, you know, people, I think it, we, you know, we all do, we get where we just, it's just joyful and singing with people's joyful and, you know, songs can be sad, but you're still, it's still so joyful to sing them. Or it's expressing, happy. right? It's like, if you go to a wake, you're still like, you know, you're still remembering that person right. and you're experiencing mm -hmm. it. And, and it's, um, and just look at where the dollars go, right? If you use dollars as a measurement of people's response, not of anything else, and you look at it, singers throughout time have done, have shown that that music is here to stay and it's really important. Um, and, and, you know, and there's um, like this Sweet Caroline, right? I mean, the fact I'm going to Boston, right? I did this <laughs> one time and they said, well, this is our song here. I, I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't know that. For, I'm 48 years old, um, um, Diane, and, and for 47 years, I know the English language well. I know what a subject is. I know what a verb is. I know what an object is. But I did not know how to read what lyrics really feel at the soul level. It took me the 48th year. And it wasn't more time. It wasn't about more time. It was how I spent the time. And with you, I mean, you know, this whole, uh, you know, combining this with all the, you know, the, the fire hose. And then, and then now looking at where it began, I can't begin to know when, but then I know it's growing strong, was in the spring, and spring became the summer, who'd have believed you'd come along, hands, touching hands, reaching out, touching me, touching you. Sweet Caroline, good times never seem so good. I've been inclined to believe they never would. But now I look at the night and it don't seem so lonely. We filled it up with only two. And when I heard, hurting runs off my shoulders. How can I hurt when holding you? Right. So that's the, yeah. when I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking like throughout COVID, we couldn't even see each other. We were all on Zoom. Mm. And now we'll be able to see each other up in Boston. So when I'm thinking of that song, I was thinking like, all right, it, yes, I was I'd be previously, I oftentimes use my wife, but, but now I can add in some other things in the community and then see how that goes. And, and this is the song that moved the Harvard group.
did it not yeah not not all of it i didn't have to do the whole song i just took a little bit out of it and -hmm. applied it when we were singing uh, uh, speaking and it worked it was just changing and do you know what they what professor christian turwich that's his name to give him credit he in his class at wharton brought up so the at mount everest was rodrigo jorgen but christian turwich brought up susan boyle oh no yeah. so so like i said you pay seventy thousand and you listen to him talk about susan boyle and he says please watch and he plays what happened with susan boyle she's on stage and simon's looking at her and he's saying what do you have to offer us today what do you want to go where do you want to go with this and she says she wants to be a you know a performer um and I think it was Elaine that she was using. And she, she said um, something, someone, and then, um, and he says, well, why haven't you gotten there? I've never been given a chance. So she's setting herself up for that contrast. But mm-hmm. then the real contrast is when she actually sings, I dreamed a dream. Mm-hmm. It, she sings it with hope. Yeah. And it is that hope and that contrast of where she was in life that was so moving. And if so, if the professor, so I've been exploring this way before Wharton started. So this is true. At the end of the rainbow, when you get to the other side, right? Mm-hmm. You, you know, um, I dreamed a dream. And, and not everybody sings I dreamed a dream that way. But if you do, I dreamed a dream, Susan Boyle's lyrics, same lyrics, right? She sang it with such hope. I dreamed a dream in time gone by when hope was high and life worth living. I dreamed that love would never die. I prayed that God would be forgiving. And what's happening with a lot of these lyrics is, um, is, um, is I'm starting to see patterns because of all the AI data sets and other things. Is I, I see the word God in I Dream the Dream. And then um, just when I needed you most, Dolly Parton, is over here, right? There's God again, mm-hmm. you know? And um, now, now I miss you more than I missed you before. And now where I find comfort, God knows. Cause you left me just when I needed you most, right? So this mm-hmm. talk singing combination, muscle memory, somehow, and this one was 1996 right here. So, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, this is this is incredible. So I have a question for you now. Um, sure. Is um, is with the ABBA song, right? Let me see if I can. Oh uh, yeah, the winner takes it all. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> the big right? song. Big song. This is big song, right? Nineteen eighty. It's a great song. Yeah. Um, not so easy to do. Um. I only heard it maybe twice. Now, this is sounds crazy, right? In you know, being an American, right, born here, most of these songs I've never heard them once. And then through practicing or reading and then picking them up, I've now heard them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this one I heard it twice. Um, one was a, a Meryl Streep one where she's performing in, you know, and and talking about this. And I thought it was really interesting how she performed it. And the other one I think was the original. And um, And, you know, I don't want to talk about the things we've gone through, though it's hurting me. Now it's history. I've played all my cards and that's what you've done too. Nothing more to say. No more ace to play. The winner takes it all, the loser standing small. Beside the victory, that's her destiny. Is that right? Is that wow, how you Wow, that was really nice. Oh, yeah? Yeah, oh. definitely. I'm going to give you um, what I was thinking. Um, I'm thinking about democracy. Mm-hmm. Now, remember, Wharton is a Quaker place. So, so they have a method of everybody just, um, you know, they got to all agree. <laughs> agree or they don't they don't they don't move on oh, right yeah. yeah so it's a very interesting pennsylvania <laughs> right and i'm i'm just thinking like all of that and i'm also thinking about 2022 
We've got COVID still. Mm -hmm. We've got the bird flu for those who are aware of it. And then we've got inflation. We've got gas prices. I'm sure you're aware of that one, mm -hmm. right? Five something. If you're driving diesel, six something, right? Mm -hmm. And that's in a state that the gas prices are lower. We've got shootings. We got all. So why do we keep on using the winner takes it all, the loser standing small, right? It's not our destiny, right? So when I'm singing that, I, I'm, I'm thinking of that. We don't have to go that, that path. I was in your arms, thinking I belong there. I figured it made sense, building me a fence, building me a home, thinking I'd be strong there. But I was a fool playing by the rules. The gods may throw a dice, their minds as cold as ice. And someone way down here loses someone dear. Uh, so I don't know if that worked by being so emotionally charged. And yes, yeah, so this, this song is an emotionally charged song. Oh. Very much so. So I thought that was that was really really good. Oh, thank you. So this this is this is where the science goes. Is that if music does what it does, mm -hmm. and it attracts so many people, can we use music as healing? And how? The Chinese characters for music and medicine have the same character, just a little grass thing on top um, for the medicine part. But there is. In medicine, when you speak it in Chinese, there pesticide is a type of medicine. Bad medicine, you know, is a type of medicine. And so there's all kinds of medicines. Poison is a medicine, just overdosed or perhaps not in the right timing. So songs, the wrong type of song, the wrong way to express a song, the song that talks about anger or some about love, could you express it differently and make it your own? so that you can heal thyself. The data shows us that it's a cappella that works. Any instrumental would be distracting to the cells to respond to it. Listening to Dolly Parton, while wonderful, doesn't talk to your cells. Your cells need your voice. Your voice is your key. And that is pretty shocking. You know, it, it doesn't cost us anything to heal our hearts and our pain. Um, if we were to sing. No, I, I also feel like the mechanics of singing um, and breathing, mm. people don't really breathe that deep. No. For the, for the you know, they, they breathe very shallow and mm -hmm. uh, there's something about breathing deeper. Yeah. When you breathe deeper, your organs, you know, work better. Everything that you bringing more light to the, you know, to your, the, the, you know, the, the center of your body there's a lot of um, a lot of great benefits about singing and breathing. I think is really really key. Not that you have to even breathe like an opera singer who who breathes very very deep, but just to even sing, you have to breathe deeper than you do as you if you're speaking or you're just walking around talking. Or if I'm emotionally into the song, I end up tricking myself into breathing deeper. <laughs> yeah. perhaps, right? I don't know, right? Well, you know, yeah. when you, you have to just to sing that melody. Oh. The winner takes it all. La 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 la. You really have to right. sustain that, and really, that taking a deeper breath will is helpful. Okay, I wasn't thinking of that when I was doing it. So yeah. now I'm going to think of that. The winner takes it all. The loser has to fall. It's right. simple and it's plain. Why should I complain? Does that make it? different yes it, it, okay. it's 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 definitely different okay um and when you go winner winner takes it all you don't have to squeeze the end of all oh. all all see how i'm uh, the squeeze yeah. all instead right. of all oh the winner takes it all there the loser you go. has to fall so yes. like you're speaking. All right. Yes, I see. Exactly. But why, how to... do you know when to cut it off and versus some things where you like go all out? I, to me, I feel like it's a feel and you it's did a feel? it. It's, okay. it's a feel thing. I mean, hmm. you know, unless you're, you're with a, 
I mean, this is pedestrian talking, uh, yeah. singing, but if you're if you're in a you know if you're in an opera or if you're in a band and you you know somebody wants you to hold it out but i feel like with that is it's more or less a feel thing what you just did was great because it's uh, if you don't feeling it you can't you shouldn't be singing it just to sing it so to speak yeah right and then yeah. so so but who talks about that right how oftentimes we don't hear that in school or i mean when do we exp expose to singing is when i I, when we're in school and then you, you just, oh, here, try some singing, right? You know, but that wasn't really singing. You almost like, you know, might, might as well, right? Uh, yes, you had to expose us, but it wasn't, if this is so important, we should all be exposing ourselves very deeply. And imagine if companies got together when they're, when they're doing their exercises and we all have to sing. And you all have to go up there and, and, and share your interpretation. We, would, we wouldn't be so um, cold to each other. No, we wouldn't. And what if, what if um, a company, hmm. you had a company and every morning you had a morning meeting just to talk right. about little current events. Yeah. And then right. at the end of the current events, we all sang a, so a few songs. Right. We had a piano player there and everybody sang a few songs. And well, we're supposed to take the music industry, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, right. Okay. It's a new application. Right. Yeah. It's a new application. And that's yeah, the... Right. These big, these big companies would be hiring musicians. <laughs> because you guys, you guys deserve to be hired, right? It's just like, you know, you, you don't, yeah, you can read a golf book and you can try on your own. But if you hired Tiger Woods, you could, you could learn from their perspective much faster. Right. And then, and then make it your own, right? But then you got to start at the top you know, at the, with the right techniques, like I wouldn't come to you to learn about the healing side, but I learned, I came to you that I have to at least be able to, to do something with it mm -hmm. before I can continue to explore it because I was hitting some bricks and I, and then when I reapplied a, a different way of singing it, the cells responded differently. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I, you could see it when you didn't squeeze that note. Yeah, right. It, it rang better, and then you felt it. And, yeah, I felt and, it. Yeah. And you stopped. You didn't. You were holding it as long as you needed to, and then you went to the next um, phrase. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it was like, uh, oh, now I, now I get it. I'm, I'm starting to see the light. Right. And it's like, okay, there's no, there's no angel dust or, or, <laughs> or stuff like that. But you, you kind of start getting it. Yes. Yeah. It, you know, it's, it's a process. It's like yoga. I feel like I've, I studied yoga for many, many years and, you know, mm. poses, I know, I know poses, I know how to get in them out of them. I know to help people mm. get in and out of them, it's, but it takes a long time. It's a process because your body can only take so much information at a moment. And mm. then, and then the next, like you're saying, wow, you're, you're at another moment in time after you've been singing for a lot, a lot, and you've been learning yeah. a lot and studying suddenly you know you're singing better because you have applied it and time helps and, and muscle memory and and mm. that you know and then you get ready for the next course it's just like a professor they give you the the first part of what they want you to the, to learn and then the middle and then the end yeah i mean just this like um like this song is very even though we didn't go through the whole thing but it's just like different pieces but but tell me does she kiss right like I used to kiss you, does it feel the same when she calls your name? I mean, this is like, it's like really uh, very moving. I mean, that the fact that you lost someone and now, now you're, you're, you get to actually speak to them. Oh. How many times have we broken up and we don't, or we move on? Um, and, and you don't, it doesn't have to be romantic either is how often times that, you know, and they, they made us go through another role play, which is, Pretend you're Ginny Rametti of IBM, all right? And, um, and you're, you now go, and the person who asked us to do this, to give him credit, is Professor Mike Useem, U-S-E-E-M. And he, he says, you bought, you bought Red Hat for $34 billion. You know, and, um, and Red Hat employees really don't want to be bought by you. Mm. They, they wish they were acquired by Google or, or, um, or Amazon, but that didn't happen. So most of your employees are now uh, of Red Hat are now sending out the resumes. <laughs> so what um, do you do, right? So, right. so Jenny, you got one shot to say something to the crowd. 
to make sure that your purchase, uh, you know, the value of purchase is retained. Mm -hmm. um, and is that sa the same thing with singing a song, right? You have, you, you, you got to deserve it. You got to be able to do this. And do you understand what it says? And so when I'm thinking about Ginny, right? But tell me, does she kiss like I used to kiss you? Does it feel the same when she calls your name, right? Mm -hmm. Somewhere deep inside, you must know. No, 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 this is somewhere deep inside. You must know I miss you. But what can I say? Rules must be obeyed. It's almost like I have to be. Like I have to be convincing. So when Jenny talks to Red Hat, she has to be convincing. Oh yes, right, absolutely, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, you have to believe it. Like if she says, "You know what? IBM needs you. We suck." Right? <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, that's, that's not going to go. Like right that, now, it could come uh, one way, right? Where IBM, you know, Red Hat's going to say, "Well, you know, we know you suck." Mm -hmm. That's why we're sending out a resume. So that, right, that doesn't right, that doesn't work, right? So she's got to somehow, you know, you, you, IBM has a lot of money. Yes, we've made a lot of mistakes, but we need you, Red Hat. And what I'm prepared to do is I'm prepared to give you the freedom to do what you always wanted to do, but with much, much more. Leverage our assets and go and change the world. IBM is here for you and together we can make it better. That, that delivery, right. right. Is, yeah. is a total, it's mm -hmm. still Jenny Rametti, but what she says is going to change that outcome and mm -hmm. our presidents do the same. And so when we're singing songs, we are the CEOs of our bodies. And if I use the emperor in China as examples, is that the last time you went in to see those concubines, now they're all beautiful women, but you only saw one of them once, right? And then you never saw them again. Now they've aged like five years, mm -hmm. you know? And, and then one concubine may say, you know what? I wanna make sure I win over the emperor. So I'm gonna make sure instead of having one night of sex, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna make sure he experiences 10 sexual experiences tonight. Now, tomorrow, the emperor has to go to work, though, right? So, so that might not be such a good experience for the emperor. Right. Right? So, so then he never sees her again. Doesn't tell her, though. And then, and then he goes and sees this other concubine, and she, she complains. She says, you know, I got a lot of things to tell you. And she starts unloading on him. <laughs> and he ends up going that night and didn't have any sex, right? But, you know, so that's, if you want to know how you are when you go to sleep, the research shows that when you go to sleep each night, all those heart cells that have been working for you for so long and your gut cells, you know, have been working for so long, never stopped. They've got a lot to tell you tonight. And so did you know that drinking milk actually leads to nightmares? But we've always drank a glass of milk to help us relax, right? If you can't sleep, drink a glass of milk, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you asked, can we, you know, what could help help you sleep? You didn't ask whether or not it gave you a nightmare, right? So there was a scientist, not me, who came up and discovered that milk causes a 20% increase in nightmares, roughly, right? So every 10 persons, you got two who will get nightmare. Same thing with eating a birthday cake because that's that's a dairy. So if you eat it too close to sleeping, you'll end up having some wild dreams. Mm. And it also is related to the sugar. And you know that if you give kids a lot of sugar, they'll have like screaming. Mm -hmm. And if you eat watermelon at night, adults might not have a problem, but a younger kid, five years old or so, could end up urinating in their bed. Mm. And it's the fructose and the watermelon and also the age and the type of person and not 100% chance, but just increases in chances. But who paid for the research on the milk? Mm -hmm. Not the milk company, right? You know, right? Not the milk company. Yeah. It was a curious scientist who went and did the study. And then someone else looks at them and see what happened. Now you're not being invited to any parties. 
you came up with that. So you're, you're going to be hard pressed to find another experiment like that, right? This is a one and done, right? So that's the, that's how music is as far as her healing is that, is that most musicians are interested in performing or becoming famous. Um, they're struggling hard enough to, why is it that I play something in the same genre and they like that person more than they like mine, mm -hmm. right? That's right. Cool. So, so prof the professors at Wharton explain this is that to win the gold medal, obviously in the Olympics is the best, but the worst experience is to get the silver, getting second. It's okay to be bronze or fourth where no one notices, but you see, you're okay with that. But if you get silver, oftentimes you're like, you're like a few seconds apart mm. or it's very subjective and you don't even quite know. And that's what burdens us a lot of times. And that's the, and so when you think about cellular side, we actually haven't, we haven't really sang to our bodies. We haven't communicated with our bodies. The, the only time we communicate is when we go to sleep mm -hmm. and they're not happy in there, right? They're just not happy. And, and I'm, I'm going to end with this song here. Um, Goodbye yellow brick road mm -hmm. is if you're going to um, uh, try to get yourselves to someone like you, you got to talk to them, hopefully before you enter into your dreams. Now, mm -hmm. When are you going to come down? When are you going to land? I should have stayed on the farm. I should have listened to my old man. You know you can't hold me forever. I didn't sign up with you. I'm not a present for your friends to open. This boy's too young to be singing the blues. Oh. So goodbye, yellow brick road, where the dogs of society howl. You can't plant me in your penthouse. I'm going back to my plow. Back to the howling old owl in the woods, hunting the horny back toad. Oh, I finally decided my future lies beyond the yellow brick road. That was using imagery and thinking about some cells wish they were, you know, they're, they're your liver cell now, your heart cell, but they, they really wish they stayed as a stem cell. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have to be, do your bidding because you know what? You never send any food down for them, resources. It's always taken by the, the nastier cells or the angrier cells. Mm -hmm. And now you have to woo them in, right? And let them know that you understand them. This is a whole nother field of medicine that is, um, that's in the space age of medicine, um, Diane. And if we can, um, what we have, and I'll give you a very clear example. We're very good at converting civilians into military, mm -hmm. but we're not very good at converting military back to civilian. We somehow can't say, ladies, you know, get up off your bench or something. It doesn't work that way. In fact, coming back, it's a totally different mechanism. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do it right, you're going to have all kinds of societal problems. So, so same thing with these songs. And that's where, that's where you come in. I mean, you, you have done some incredible transformative um, things on me that I, I didn't even know at the time. And then as I, as I re-looked at the song or retried it, this week, I didn't do any many new ones. I only introduced two, but, um, but just rehashing was really, really powerful. So I want to thank you on this one. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. So we'll end here um, and um, we'll stop the recording, all right? Okay. All right. Let's see. I'm going to stop here.